Go for it. All right. Well, thank you so much for this opportunity. And uh, Jessica and Jez, I'm so glad you all could join me. Um, uh, we're from one Husky kitchen to another. Hopefully I can uh, pass on this really wonderful recipe that has been in my family for 20 years. Um, this is definitely my number one uh, bring to potluck. Um, everybody loves it when they eat it. They're, they always want me to make it. Um, so it's been, it's been a hit and uh, a part of my family in our tradition in our house for so long. So uh, I wanted to start out just saying that uh, the recipe came from originally a authentic Southern cookbook that my husband borrowed from a friend, copied that book and gave it back to him. And we looked through it and we were just like, wow, these recipes are so classic. We've never seen anything like it before. So we took the macaroni and cheese recipe. We, you know, didn't do some of the older kind of strange things that went in it, just really kept it pretty plain. And then uh, just came up with kind of a customized version of that that has turned into Mama Sarah's uh, world famous macaroni and cheese. So um, first thing first, you want to preheat your oven. So we've already done that. Next, you want to boil your noodles. Many people, you all probably know how to boil noodles, so we skipped that part. But what you want to do with your noodles is you really want to rinse them after they come out. Um, you want to stop the cooking of the noodles. So we're just going to rinse them off with the cold water and then shake it out. You don't want to leave too much of that cold water in there. You want it to come on out. So once we have the noodles, we can set them aside. And you know, if you're gonna take it to a potluck, you might wanna do like an aluminum pan, but we're gonna do the homemade, good for the environment, glass pan. So we're gonna spray it with a little pan to start so it doesn't stick on the bottom. You want the cheese to get crispy, but you don't want it to stick. All right, so there we go there. Now we're just gonna spread the noodles out. All in the pan. All right, so you should have a pretty full pan. Okay, you don't want it to be too thin. We're making a double of the recipe today. So you would you would have either a eight ounce package of noodles or a 16 ounce package of noodles. And this is the 16 ounce. So this is the you know family meal plan one. So we have the noodles in here. And the next thing you want to do is add the egg. And this is what I've advertised as the secret ingredient to really good macaroni and cheese is beating the egg and then you pour it over the noodles while they're in the pan. Okay, so the recipes and everything stick to the noodles. Because if you may have seen some recipes and the cheese falls right off. You don't want that, right? So we're going to beat the eggs. Oh. And I think this is that secret that when everybody, uh, when anybody says, oh my gosh, your macaroni and cheese is wonderful. How do I make it so great? You know, maybe they didn't say it like that, but that's how it felt to me. At least. So I say, you know what? The secret is the egg. So we've just beaten the eggs, two of them, and we're going to just spread it over the noodles. Now, if you're, you know, cooking this for your nuclear family, you would just put your hands right in there and just work the egg all over the noodles, okay? If you're making it, you know, COVID times, you know, you don't want to do anything crazy, you're going to put your face mask on and use a whisk. So you can just turn it, make sure it's covering all the noodles. And you see, as you can imagine, if you didn't rinse the noodles, you pour that egg over it, it might cook the egg and you don't want that. So the noodles have to be cool enough to take the egg. All right, so we're just mixing it up there. Yeah, that looks really good. It's kind of fun to do it by hand too, it's pretty cool. Okay, so now you wanna to turn to 
what is the next most important part, and that is the cheesy goodness that's going to go all over it. And so first, uh, you've got to start with butter. Here we have eight tablespoons of butter for this double recipe. All right, so you're just going to put that into the pot on a low, um, very low temperature. So the idea is you're going to melt the butter down, and then we're going to get some flour, um, which is also uh, a half a cup. So eight tablespoons of butter is a half cup of butter, eight tablespoons of flour, and you just multiply the, the more you want to make of the recipe. So um, we're going to put it on low, 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 and get this butter to melt. And while the butter is melting, um, I'd love to tell a story about uh, the time that I made this macaroni and cheese for my husband's work with the city of Seattle, okay? So my husband works for the city of Seattle, Seattle Public Utilities. So they uh, are pretty hardworking guys. They work 10 and 12 hour shifts, uh, ladies as well. So we've got a whole crew there. So I said, okay, I'll make the macaroni and cheese for your potluck. So we made it, made a big batch of it. They took it, they ate it. And but before you knew it, every single time there was uh, another event or a potluck or something like that, they were like, hey, can you get your wife to make that macaroni and cheese again? And so I'm like, you know, oh my gosh, they're like, and this is like a year later or something. They're, they remember it, you know? And so, um, it just makes you feel good to be able to share something and other people are taking pride in, in eating or taking, uh, getting satisfaction of eating it as well. So the butter is melting and we're going to get the flour and start adding the flour very slowly. All right. So I've got the flour here, good old regular flour. And, um, we're going to use the half cup measuring. Uh, spoon because you really want to add it very slowly. You want the sauce to not get lumpy. It needs to, uh, the, the blend of the flour and the butter needs to just happen uh, at a slow pace and really keep it smooth. And so the temperature really does have to keep it keep down. Now, if you're making a large batch of it, definitely uh, watch the heat because if it gets too hot, the flour could burn. If it's too cold, it's going to get lumpy. So it's really something you want to do very slowly. And so it's still melting. I'm not quite going to put it in, but I'm going to get out the milk so we can go over what happens after we get the roux sauce. That's what they call this, the roux, um, with the flour and the butter mixed together. Then we'll start to add some milk very slowly as well. So, I don't know, um, so we sprinkled it a little bit in there and bring you over just kind of see the butter is in there melting. And now we're going to take a, another whisk, second whisk. So we can get in here and start mixing that together. So it's still melting and we're going to start mixing and making sure that it just stays really nice and creamy like that, okay? Alright, so here we go. So when you're doing this, you have to stay focused. Maybe you're cooking it for Thanksgiving, which we do absolutely cook this every Thanksgiving. Um, usually we cook this, even if we do, which sometimes we do, we go out for Thanksgiving dinner. Even if we do that, we've got to cook this at least once over the holidays. Um, all right, so the butter is almost completely melted now. We'll turn that heat way down because this next process just takes a little more time. So I put in about a half of the first uh, half a cup, uh, quarter cup, and now the whole first quarter of that half cup is in. All right, it's looking really good. Now the heat and how it looks, how creamy it looks. If it starts to look thick, take it off the eye. 
okay? You just slide it right off the eye and then you're gonna be able to mix it in and control your temperature, okay? So I just took it off the eye a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna put it right back on and start whisking again. All right, that's looking excellent. So we get the rest of that flower in there. Take it off the eye, because right now you're going to have to get your milk and start adding that in very slowly. So for each recipe, it's two and a half cups of milk. So for this double recipe, we're going to have five cups of milk. The first one must be stirred in um, very gingerly. So I'm only I'm going to pour like a very small amount. And then I'm going to whisk that in. Okay, and it's it's looking really good. It's staying creamy, no lump. And I'm gonna show you guys that. Let me get you over here so you can see a little bit. There's a little bit in there. So now stirring it, keeping it, keeping it smooth. You see, it's trying to thicken up a little bit. So we're gonna get the rest of this, almost all of that. Put that in there, and then just keep. Keep whisking it. Yeah, so you don't want to get it, don't want it to get lumpy. Got to keep it going so it's nice and creamy. See that? See that? Looks, that's great. All right, now it can take the rest of the milk. And before I drop the computer, I'm going to set you here. There we go. So, all right, one cup of milk down. Got to keep track, okay? Got to remember, oh my goodness, how much did I just put in there and what did I do? So. All right, so we've done one, now we're gonna do number two. And we'll turn up the heat with each cup that we add, okay? So it went from really low, now we're on a medium low. And here goes the second cup of milk, you just pour it right in, and then you're gonna whisk it, keeping it smooth. And now it's gonna look just kind of like a milk that has a little, little maybe batter in it. It just kind of looks like that. So. The flour and milk here. And so we've done two cups. Here we go. Next one. And you can use any kind of milk. You can use um, lactose free milk. You can use um, gluten free noodles. There, you can uh, experiment with the cheese. There's a lot of things that you can do with this recipe to really make it your own. Um, you can try it with some Beecher's cheese. That's a local um company that makes some really excellent cheese here and uh, we've done that before kind of made it a little more gourmet um so that was three cups here we go with number four but you got to remember um you know you, you can use all you can use different noodles too you can you can really make it your own and see what you like i think the original is the best we've done all those different experimentations in usually we come right back to well, the, the regular elbow noodles and the regular way to do it is the best. So I put another cup in, I'm turning it up. So now we're on a medium on the, uh, on the roux sauce. And the roux sauce is coming, uh, it's coming in now pretty, um, pretty thin. So this is gonna be what we put all that good cheese in, okay? All that extra sharp cheddar. All right, so that was four cups of milk. So we have one more to go. And we'll be done with that milk. So put it right in there. It's on medium. And so now you just need to keep stirring it. It does still need to keep getting stirred because if you let it sit too long, you'll get a film on the bottom. And you don't want that. You don't want the flour to start to congeal on the bottom. So all right, the next most important thing that makes any food taste good is salt. And unfortunately, it can be uh, bad for some of us. I now have to eat less salt. The rest of my family doesn't need to eat less salt. So sometimes we make it without as much and then people have to add their own. Um, but the best thing to do if you're gonna share it is to make sure you put all of the salt that the recipe requires because other folks, that's, what, that's what's gonna catch their taste buds and they're gonna love it. So here we have our salt and pepper, easy. 
but it's also kind of a science cooking is, right? So the chemistry of the ingredients all need to be in balance. And as much as I am not a salt loving person, um, this recipe definitely needs it. Okay, so we need to do one teaspoon of salt for each um, batch of the recipe. So we're doing two teaspoons. Which when you look at it, you're like, oh my gosh, that's so much salt. But you know, it's actually not when you're thinking of a large dish. All right, so we've got one, and you know you don't wanna pour the salt over your pot in case you get too much. You don't want that to go in. But you, you, you can't, what do they say? You can't take it out, okay? So that's one and two. Here we go. So we got two teaspoons of salt and then we need one teaspoon of pepper, just regular black pepper. There we go. All right. All right, and you just sprinkle that in there. All right, so now you're whisking it up. So we've got the flavor in there, we've got the seasoning, and now it is warm enough. We'll turn it up just a little bit. Now we're going to start adding everybody's favorite ingredient, the cheese. Here we go. Cheese, just regular sharp cheddar from the grocery store. It doesn't have to be fancy. And if you want to save time, buy it already grated. But you can, you can make it with any cheese. So it's going to be two and a half cups of cheese for each one. So you're going to have five cups of cheese. I do those five cups measuring by hand. Okay, and so you're really you're sprinkling it in, and then you're gonna want to whisk it up. And you don't want to put all the cheese in all at once, but you're it will be kind of a steady process. If it doesn't look like it's melting, you would want to go ahead and turn up the heat a little bit. And that's so we've done that, and so now we're just mixing it together and adding the cheese. So it's, you're gonna see the cheese is in there. It needs to get all melted. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna keep on adding cheese. So we did one, and there's two. And we'll give it a little bit more heat. Not too much because the flour is still sensitive to that heat. So if you continue to turn up the heat, the flour will start to congeal together and it won't um, stay as smooth as what we want. We want the cheese, the flour, and the butter to become one. And it turns into a very nice orange, cheesy box. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and add the rest of this bag. All right, and we got one more bag of cheese over here. And we'll start adding some of this. And then you want to make sure after you've added all the cheese that you, you do want to leave a little bit of cheese left over to sprinkle on the top, okay? Because that's that will help your recipe, well, your dish come out with a nice kind of brown, crispy cheese on the top. And uh, it's just so you're adding a little extra cheese to that. So while it's cooking, Turn it up just a little bit. I remember this recipe, a potluck, so long ago. There's been so many. I've been with the state of Washington um, for 17 years as an employee. So I went from um, working in Olympia and then the Evergreen State College, and then I joined uh, the University of Washington, the Department of Global Health. And one of the potlucks that we had there, which is amazing, because we have people from all over the world bringing food and, and uh, flavors and things from everywhere. And it made me feel really good for people to get to taste something that I knew how to make very well. And, you know, I, it's, it's definitely um, a rich part of the American culture to eat a lot of cheese, I think. And, uh, eat a lot of comfort food, especially when we're, uh, we're not doing, not so happy. Like, 
if you have your unhappy hour, you can have some macaroni and cheese and it'll make, help make you feel better. So one time I actually had made the macaroni and cheese and then I cut it into individual bricks and then wrapped them in tin foil and then brought them to the office and put them in the refrigerator and sent an email and said, hey, everybody, there's macaroni and cheese in the fridge. You know, you can take it home or have some. And people were just so, they were like, this is so great. I uh, gave some to the chair of our department in the Department of Immunology is where I work right now. And she said, Sarah, this is the best macaroni and cheese I've ever tasted in my life. And I'll tell you, if you know Dr. Joan Goverman, that's a huge compliment. So uh, it makes me feel good to share this with you guys. So now I want to see, and I've been stirring this here for a while, and now you see how the cheese is now kind of like dripping and it's all gooey and yummy. So now we're about to uh, go ahead and pour it on the noodles. All right. So I'm just give it a little bit more stir. And I want to make sure that it comes off of the whisk. You know, once it's coming off the whisk, and then you know it's ready to get poured on the noodles. Oh yeah, it's ready. Okay. So I'm going to grab our pot holders. Be very careful with this. It's very hot. You don't want to spill this on yourself. All right, so now we're just going to pour it over the noodles. Nice and easy. All right, and there's some cheese down at the bottom there. So I'm going to grab this whisk, make sure we get all of that. I want to get all of it in the pan. Yes, and it really should come with very close to the top. All right, so put that down, turn off the eye. Now the next thing, you do want to take a moment and just put the whisk in, because these are empty noodles. So you want the cheese to go inside of the noodles. And you'll see little tiny bubbles start popping up everywhere. And that means, you know, you're getting the, uh, the roux sauce and the cheese sauce inside the noodle. All right. So now the last thing before we throw it in the oven for 45 minutes is the rest of the cheese. Okay. So we set these down. Here we go. So we're just going to spread it evenly across the top. Nothing fancy. Not too much. It will start to melt. So don't be surprised if you're like all of a sudden the cheese you put on there is just completely dissolved. It, uh, it does start to melt pretty quickly. So we just get the rest of it all on there. And so you'll want to use, what is this? You know, two, uh, two eight ounce packages, packages of cheese is going to be perfect for a double recipe. So there we go. All right now it's very heavy. It's very, it's not quite hot yet, but you want to be careful. You don't want to miss fire when you try to put it in the oven. Okay, so very carefully. And it's pretty solid. I right, bring it over so you can see what we've got going on. It's going in the oven. All right. All right. Okay, now it's really funny. I moved into this house and the oven doesn't have a timer. So you've got to set your timer on your iPhone. If you don't have one in your kitchen, you don't want to leave it in too long. All right. So you want to check it after 45 minutes. Um, on 375 and once it's done you can if you want uh, to know that it's done is you'll want to see the top and that cheese on the top look kind of golden brown okay and uh, once you've done that you can say okay I'll take it out but you don't want to eat it yet you do want to let it rest for about an hour before you eat it if you don't the butter which is really hot will kind of pool into the empty spot that you just carved out. And you don't want that. You want the ingredients to, to mesh together at a room temperature for at least an hour before you eat it. Um, it keeps extremely well. Put it in the refrigerator for, because you know, you can freeze it. You can, you know, just break off a brick of it and put it in the microwave. And it's great for um, work. you're working at home, you want to have some food that's good, you don't feel like cooking every day. It's definitely something easy that you can make last through the week. Um, and then, uh, like I said before, 
it's a big, um, it's a privilege for me to be able to make this recipe and share it, but also um, to know that you can make it, you can make it gluten-free, you can make it with cheese that's non-dairy. Um, there's a lot of things you can do. You can make it a little more healthy. You can uh, substitute some, I use 2% milk. Um, the one thing you don't want to uh, mess around with is the butter. Um, you don't want to mess around with that. You can use gluten-free flour for sure. It, it does, it's a little thicker, so you might just uh, have to watch that a little bit. Um, but otherwise, uh, we'll have a, a finished product in 45 minutes. I wasn't a, as much of a kitchen show uh, genius to be able to have it ready to show you at the moment. So um, that's all for the recipe that I have today. Um, is is there something where uh, y'all would be able to ask me questions or is this just a broadcast? No, we can definitely ask questions. We can keep it pretty uh, informal like that too. I definitely have a couple questions. Oh, yes, please um, ask. But okay. first, I wanted to say like, um, why don't you at the end of it, send me a photo of the, of the mac and cheese and I will, I'll edit the video so that before we put it up on YouTube, I'll have the finished product as a photo for you at the end. Just because I'm curious. I need to know what this looks like at the end. Oh, yes. It, it, looks, it looks great. Okay, we'll take a picture. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll eat some and um, <laughs> let you know how it is. So. Yeah. Um, Sarah, I, you mentioned earlier in the beginning that like the way that this recipe was kind of built was it was first found in a cookbook. Um, and then it was, and then you kind of did your own altering um, and, and make it and made it your own. I'm curious, what are the parts that you made your own and how long have you had that, like this recipe, how has it kind of like evolved to what you have now? Sure. No, that, that's, um, that's a great question because it really gets to, you know, how a recipe is kind of like, it's not really an instruction book as much as it is guidelines. Okay, because cooking is a science, but it's also an art, right? And so when you, when you get a recipe, sometimes it'll have weird things in there, like pimentos from, you know, olives, like, or some other kind of strange thing that maybe people used to have a lot of in a long time ago, or if they maybe didn't have things, they would, um, especially in um, Black Southern cookbooks, sometimes you're using... Uh, the, re the ingredients that are available to you rather than maybe just any ingredient that, that everyone uh, say, oh, it's everyone could have access to. So it's, it's, it definitely came from a different culture than I grew up in, but it came from the culture my husband grew up in. So we looked at it together and we're like, yeah, we don't like pimentos. Um, yeah, I don't think we want to put breadcrumbs on top. We don't, you know, why would, we, why would you want to do that? Um, other people I know have, they break up rich crackers and put them on the top. So there's a lot of different things that just kind of whatever floats your boat um, can go in there. But we just kind of stripped it down to say, okay, what do we all like in the household? You know, no one wants any peppers in there. Don't put any onions in it. You know, all that kind of thing. So um, when we made it that way, and it was so good. We were just like, oh, wow, this is amazing. So we had to make it again and share it because you want other people to experience that. That is like, oh, my God, that's an amazing flavor. So um, I have made a few mistakes. One of the ones is accidentally putting in too much butter where I was thinking, oh, a quarter cup is a half stick. No, that is a half cup of butter in that, that half a stick. So um, it didn't tear, turn out as terrible as I thought, but some people ate it, they loved it. I thought it was way too much butter. Um, the other error I've made is not enough salt. If you don't put enough salt in there, you're gonna be like, yeah, it, it has the right consistency, but it's not, you know, making my taste buds excited. So that's what that salt does. And uh, even like we have battles about that all the time where, you know, some people like salt, I can't, I can't do too much. So. Yeah, did you have did you have any other questions? And it's warm in here. I'm leaning on the stove, so pardon me. I have my little sweat towel. <laughs> I, I had I had a question. I'm sorry I came in late. Um I I was interested in knowing what the secret ingredient was. Did I miss it? 
Cool. Yes, I'd, I'd love to explain that. Um, so the secret ingredient is eggs. Eggs make everything better and hold it together, right? If you're, you're dipping your chicken in it or you know, you're frying things. So it just helps you keep it together. And what you do is after you've um, cooked your noodles, you've rinsed them thoroughly so they've cooled off. And we put them in the pan, spread them out, and you have to make sure that it's cool because when you add the egg, you don't want that egg to just cook as soon as it touches the noodles. So you beat the egg, uh, put it over the noodles, and what we usually do is we work it out in with our hands to kind of move the egg all over the noodles. So when you pour that good cheese sauce on there, it's going to stick. It'll stick to the noodles instead of having this, like, you get your fork and the cheese is falling off and the noodles are staying on the fork. And yeah, so you're having macaroni and cheese instead of mac and cheese. And that's what we want. <laughs> so, thanks. Egg. I wish we could taste it. <laughs> I know. I, I'm excited to someday, hopefully, you know, uh, make that available to everyone. I, I, it's, uh, I certainly would be if we had something, uh, classes in person uh, in the fall. But Sarah, I have a question. Well, first I wanted to thank you. Um, I could always use a cooking lesson. And, <laughs> um, and this is helpful. Um, and I also love how part of your enjoyment of this dish is like how much other people love it. And so thank you for sharing that. Um, but I wanted to know what kind of cheese blends, like do you go crazy with the different cheeses? Do you experiment or do you stick with like the ones that you know work? <laughs> yeah, no, that is, that's a really good point about what works. And because some cheese has a very different consistency. Um, I know people that maybe they would uh, cut up some Velveeta, you know, that big brick of kind of like cheese food and then add that in there, you know. Um, I thought that uh, adding a, a, a blend of, of beachers with um, not the smoked beachers, but the flagship beachers, they're really the kind of one they're known for, um, with the extra sharp cheddar. Um, I, I prefer the extra sharp cheddar for sure, just the flavor and the taste of it. It just seems to, um, I don't know, it's just our preference, I think. Um, medium works really well, especially because sometimes at the grocery store, medium cheddar is like the only giant bag that's there, you know, so you can make it with that. But um, yeah, I think that that you can choose any cheese and try it out, but we always come back to the original. And I think that's after, you know, 20 years of making this recipe, um, we figured out, okay, let's stop messing with it and just make it right. That's how we feel. That's how we feel about it now. But um, with, it's nice that people can take it and say, hey, you know, I can't do flour. I can't do that kind of cheese. You know, or you need only goat cheese or, you know, there's a lot of things you can do. So it's versatile. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. What is it? Only 336? That was, well. You might get to see it. <laughs> Let's see. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah. Hey, Sarah. Uh, yes. I, I'm like so stuck on like this. I the um the kind of the experimentation part piece of this because I don't do that with when it comes to recipes. I have to follow it by the T and like my mom's. It's always my mom's cooking too. Like I follow it to the T. It's never been anything that I experiment with. Have you had any like um? experiments that didn't go well in terms of like with this particular recipe or any recipe really but like you know you decided to try something different you're like no we need to take a step back from that yes um yes so i i don't know if you've ever used all recipes so it's a it's a i've seen them and i think they're here in seattle still um but it's a website you can go there and kind of type in your ingredients what you've got um or kind of you want a side dish and i think that um, idea of customizing recipes, if you look at a recipe in that medium, that, uh, that website that you like, if you go down to the comments and you look, you'll see most people will say, oh, I didn't have X ingredient, so I used this, and it came out great. Or they'll say, oh yeah, everything is fine, except it really needed more of this. And you know, I can't imagine why they wouldn't put more of this, you know, so there's, there's more information about uh, the recipe, even though they're rating it very well, and then maybe they're rating that recipe very highly, but what they're rating 
usually, in my opinion of reading them, is they're rating their dish. And if they customize that recipe, they're really not rating that recipe as much as they're rating their, their version of that recipe. So I think knowing that it's okay to experiment, switch out different meat, or you could, you could add meat to the dish, different noodles, different shaped noodles, I think. Um, if you're doing stuff like this, you could even get like, say like a muffin tray, which I have. So something like this, you get your muffin tray, and then you can either just spray it with Pam or you can put muffin cups in there. And then once you've done all of this work that we did to make the roux sauce, get everything in there, before you sprinkle the cheese on the top, you can use either kind of a ladle or an ice cream scoop or something and put them in the individual things and in the individual slots of the muffin and then uh, sprinkle just a little cheese on the top, put it in there. You're gonna wanna watch the cooking time because whenever you break something into a smaller you know, unit, it's gonna cook a little faster. So um, that would be one way of like taking it to a party or so you have kids, you know, you want to give the kids something good that's not just like sweet, you know, cake or something. Um, so yeah, you can do all kinds of little cool stuff with it. Um, again, I'm still, I'm still making now in my, in my older years now, I guess I'm really making the original. <laughs> so um, one other thing I was going to say about uh, recipes uh, has to do with handing them down and passing them down uh, to generations and um, getting your kid involved and saying, you know, hey, this is something that, you know, you loved. I wanna make sure that you know how to do it. So, you know, cooking with your family, that can be really wonderful. Um, for my daughter's sweet 16 birthday, we had a, a big event and uh, one of the things was that she wanted was to have mac mama's macaroni and cheese for her party. So the place we had had a kitchen. So we went in there, I went in there, made it for them. We called Taco Bell and they brought tacos and macaroni and cheese and it, it was great. And uh, I just love to, again, to share that with more and more people. And then that's that nice memory that they have um, from getting to experience that. So we're having a fun time and we're eating something that's fun to eat. So I'm gonna check on it. It's looking really good. It's just pale, pale orange still. So there's nothing nice and crispy brown yet, but we'll make sure that you guys get that picture um, so you can add it. Cool. Well, uh, are there any other questions for Sarah? Well, thank you, Sarah. I really appreciate it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we would love to see the, what the final product looks like. So make sure you send me a photo. I think that would be great. Um, there was on the chat too uh, a post, like a, a question of whether the recipe will be posted anywhere. I'll leave that up to you because that is your recipe. Um, hey. But if you feel like sharing it, go ahead and um, absolutely. No, you got to share it. You got to share it, and you got to take it and make it your own. So what I've got um, is so my boss, like I had said, my boss said this is the best I've ever had. So I made her, and if you guys can see that, kind of, no. We've got a recipe, it's backwards on the screen, I'm sure. But pretty much everything that I told you is here, where wow. you can read it. And then the scale up on the recipe. So you can make, you know, six times servings to serve a crowd of 30 or more people, um, and how to do that. Uh, one of the things that I had a chance to do while I was living in Olympia was uh, work at the Bread and Roses Soup Kitchen. And so for about six months back 20 years ago in the year 2000, I um, got a chance to be part of the kitchen crew and help cook meals for all of the homeless folks that would come to Bread and Roses for lunch and dinner um, during the weekday. So getting to uh, like make hard boiled eggs for a large group of people it's just amazing. So, you know, you want to know how to scale up that recipe so you can cook for a bunch of people if you have to. So, but yeah, thanks for letting me share it with you and I will give you the recipe so you can post it along with the awesome picture.
thank you so much. Out. Yeah, I'll put I'll make sure it's on the YouTube description video when we get this posted up and and onto the hour commonly calendar. So um, perfect. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you all for for joining us. This video will be posted up uh, pretty soon after once I have that photo and that recipe. Um, yeah, and thank you all for joining our commonly today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone.